And then we get on to the mixing of all the other components of the uh, pop in, into the, uh, the soda. Um, so one of the things that uh, we do actually mix a, a quantity of beforehand is our acid mix, the citric acid mix. And uh, the reason we do this is that this is even even smaller quantities uh, that we can't measure out. You would have to uh, measure by milligrams, and the smallest we can measure is grams. Uh, so we actually measure out a quantity uh, beforehand and mix it up. Uh, so here we have a, a two liter with uh, 100 milligrams, excuse me, excuse me. Here we have a two liter of 100 grams of sodium citrate, 100 grams of sodium benzoate, and 26 grams of citric acid in a two liter bottle. We use 10 milliliters of this per uh, batch for the, uh, the, the test batch size. We use 100 milliliters of this uh, for a full keg size. Uh, so I'm going to measure out 10, 10 milliliters of this uh, into the uh, mix here. And uh, again, this is a test batch, so I'm not going to be too careful here. But uh, that's about 10 right there. So I'm going to put that in to our emulsion. And the other component we're going to need is our phosphoric acid. We actually purchased a full 2.5 liters uh, of uh, the phosphoric acid. Um, extremely dangerous. Uh, if you get to this level, make sure you handle this carefully. Uh, touching this can, can burn your skin. Uh, very dangerous. So handle this with care. Uh, I'm not actually going to pour out of this one. I've already poured out a small vessel. Earlier, I poured a small quantity of the phosphoric acid into a uh, little glass jar here. And remember, glass, glass, a little glass pipette here. We're going to measure out 0.7 milliliters. If you do this methodology, make sure you're extremely careful not to suck any up into your mouth. Sucking the flavor oils into your mouth creates a very intense flavor in your mouth for a while. Sucking up the phosphoric acid will burn. So into the emulsion goes the phosphoric acid. Phosphoric acid. I always want to say it's phosphoric for some reason. Okay, now that we have all that mixed up, we're going to uh, pour it into our 2 liter. And then we'll start dumping some more water in here. Uh, I always try to dump out of the uh, container I dump from uh, to try to get more out of it. Kind of like using the Campbell soup can to measure your water so you get more of the concentrate out. If you actually mix this up and drink it, it would taste extremely bitter because we have several acids in there and no sweetener at all. Uh, especially when you mix it with the carbonation, uh, which creates carbonic acid, you get acid, 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 which is why you add the sugar. Uh, we use regular table sugar um, as it is impossible to get small quantities of high fructose corn syrup and a lot of people prefer the, the regular sugar anyways. Just adding regular sugar into here would not uh, create the right mouthfeel or sweetness. Uh, the regular table sugar is what's called a disaccharide and we want to break up the two disaccharides into two monosaccharides. Uh, this creates a better mouthfeel and actually creates a sweeter uh, uh, product. Uh, so when we're doing the five gallon kegs, uh, we actually mix up a, uh, 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 it's 2,240 uh, kilograms uh, of sugar for a full five gallon keg. Uh, but I've also, I've uh, taken a uh, container here, marked the sugar line, just dump the sugar in and it makes it go a lot faster. For a, uh, a two liter, it's only, divide by 10, 224 grams of uh, sugar. Um, when we're doing the full keg size, we actually heat up the water to boiling, uh, remove it from the boiling, add the sugar, stir it up, and that will, uh, the heat breaks up the two saccharides, uh, the, the di disaccharides into two monosaccharides. Um, you don't want to overcook it, you don't want browning, you don't want caramelization, you just want to break those bonds. Uh, in the, uh, the small batch size, it's not so important um, 
So um, unless uh, sometimes we're doing a test batch, we'll make up a, a full test batch and then divide that into ten uh, for each of our test batch sizes. Um, if you don't, if you're not planning on making ten or feel like wasting the sugar afterwards, uh, you can just uh, um, heat it up, um, uh, the, heat up with some water, and, and it'll break it up pretty good. Uh, so I'm actually going to heat up um, about a cup of water um, and then dump it into uh, 224 grams of, of the sugar. So here we're going to measure our sugar. Uh, we've got a nice little scale here. I uh, picked this up at uh, Myers. Pretty cheap. Um, so first thing you want to do is turn it on, set it to grams, uh, kilograms in this case. Um, we put the thing on here. It's going to measure this. We don't want to measure this, so we hit the tear. And what tear does is it cuts it back down to zero. So now the scale reads zero. We can add our, sh our sugar in. So again, we want 224 grams. That's 50, 60, 70, 90, 100. There's 200. Just a little tiny bit more. 224. 224, right there. Boom. So the difference between 220, 224, not a whole lot. So there is our 224 grams of sugar. That's enough sugar for one 2 liter of pop. So here's about a cup of water, and we're going to put it in the microwave for about 30 seconds. So now I have about a cup of water, uh, got it hot out of the tap, then uh, heat it up for about 30 seconds in the microwave. We're just going to pour that right into our sugar, and it's going to start dissolving right away. We want to mix it up good and thorough. Try to get as many of those uh, disaccharides broken down into monosaccharides as possible here. So it, uh, it'll be a little bit cloudy, and then when it stops being cloudy, it starts, it won't be quite clear, but almost clear. Uh, when it's almost clear, that's, that's pretty much when you have a, a good uh, simple syrup made up. So simple syrup is what we're making here. Um, you can uh, sometimes buy it at Gordon Foods. Uh, you have to order it, though. We've never tried it that way because... Uh, this method seems to work just fine for us. So, into the two liter with the, our other ingredients, it goes. So, and uh, with this methodology, you don't get a quite good enough uh, breakdown of the sugars, the dissolve, uh, dissolution of the sugar. So, we're going to. Uh, just do this twice here, rinse it out, get as much sugar in there as possible, and we just have a little spill there. <laughs> so there you go. We, um, I started adding about a sixteenth of a uh, teaspoon of meringue powder, uh, and that's a foaming agent, and uh, some of the research I've done uh, seems to indicate that some of the professional pops uh, put a foaming agent in just to make it uh, uh, keep its head, keep the bubbles on a little bit longer. Um, a lot of the complaints we have about open soda is that it doesn't have enough carbonation. It actually has the exact same amount of carbonation, um, but I think part of the reason is the appearance. Uh, because um, we have no foaming agent, really, um, the, uh, the foam tends to go away really fast, and people just think it doesn't have the carbonation. So I added about a sixteenth of the uh, of a tablespoon of uh, uh, the meringue powder in there. So now we have uh, a pretty good mixture here. Uh, we can fill this up a little bit more. So there's one last ingredient. Uh, this would actually taste pretty good, but as you notice, it's just clear. Uh, we now need to make it look like cola, and that comes from coloring. 